afternoon. <clears throat> Just secured this uh, Ford Transit Custom Euro 6 with a um, Cobra alarm system. Rip lock, we've all seen these. Uh, instead of deadlocks or slam locks, this customer's gone for the, uh, the ultimate lock, which is uh, it's in a slam lock configuration now. So unlock the rear door, put the key in, twist, and pull. The door will open. That's anchored on the. Uh, it's a very secure lock. That's anchored on the through the door skin. It's also secured inside here with a plate. This basically latches every time you shut the vehicle. It'll latch and then won't release. It's actually latch, key to release. There's also an internal escape handle which you fit on both doors. So if the customer was in the back of the van and the door was to shut, they wouldn't be able to get out if the keys were in the door outside. So, little pull. That releases the uh, handle, as you can see. So, this, this latches onto a bonded plate onto the other side so that's basically like a horseshoe which is also bolted through onto the inside with a I don't know three inch steel plate to give it strength they're not just screwed in they're actually bolted through the door so the side door is the same just mind these bloody stingers so this sits a bit lower down as you can see it's a nice tidy finish it's all been wax oiled and rust proofed around here. Key goes in about 11 o'clock, turn it and then pull. Nice, simple, smooth action. That's been anchored inside the uh, on the, the base of the C pillar. So we have to take off all of the uh, all the panelling, all the internal panels to secure that bolt on the inside as well. It's also secured inside. And they've also got a little uh, another escape handle, so that's mounted onto the uh, inside again. If they get trapped, they can pull that to release. So, two these are called ultimate slam locks. Um, two of them, one per door, one side. Sorry, one rear barn door and one sliding side door. He's also had an alarm off us, the Cobra Vodafone Automotive A4615. We've also fitted a uh, internal microwave sensor for the load area because obviously any alarm that is secured onto a van, the ultrasonics will stop at this point. Uh, if it's got a microwave sensor, a dual zone or a single zone, it will, only, it will only protect the cab area simply because it's microwaves and ultrasonics are contained by, you know, ultrasonics are contained by. Um, volume so a sealed area will stop the ultrasonics you know protecting any further back a microwave is it's contained by a metal or conductive material so a microwave won't protect any further back um, that's why we put a second microwave in the back to to protect the load area because people uh, believe it or not cutting through roofs it's only single skin there if you've got a nibbler through that a uh, little pilot hole, a little nibbler. You could get someone through there in about 30 seconds. And most fans that are alarmed up, if they haven't got any volumetric protection in the back, they won't trigger. Someone could enter your van with, um, <laughs> even though it's alarmed, if they crawled through the roof. Um, so yeah, that's why we put that in there. On the dash, we've got in the cab, sorry, we've got a uh, microwave, sorry, been a long day. On the, in the dash, <laughs> in the cab area, we've got ultrasonics. Now, ultrasonics are um, volumetric sensors, so they rely on, an, on a closed window and a sealed cabin area. So they're ideal for the cab of a, of a van. So basically, one of them is a transmitter. Essentially, it's a, it's a speaker, which transmits a, a very high frequency sound wave and the one on the opposite side if you can see that that um that receives that's a microphone so that receives the sound pattern um when you set the alarm when you set the alarm the ultrasonics take 30 seconds to settle down we've also fitted a internal high 
high brightness LED because the LED on the Cobra system isn't that bright. Uh, I tend to I prefer putting extra LEDs on there simply because it's just not nice at night when you light when you are on the van. The cab lights are quite quite bright. As I say, the Ford, the Cobra system isn't that bright. So um, yeah, ultrasonics which protect the cab. It's got a single cut immobilizer on this one. A canvas integration, so it reads all doors, boot bonnet, um, auto rearming if needed, pin code bypass in case the remote fails. You can also add on um, secure disarm tags that will won't disarm the the alarm if the tag isn't present. It doesn't come as standard with the Cobra system, but it's it's additional. For 50 quid I'll, I'll patch your ADR card onto you. So yeah, front's protected by ultrasonics, load area is protected by microwave, load area is protected by slam locks, ultimate slam locks, very hefty, very hefty robust locks. And what else did we do? We um, fitted a rep lock to the driver's door and with all Replox, with all Fords that I work on, I um, modify the locking wiring. So, locking the van will activate the central locking, but it won't deactivate the central locking, so that keeps the back of the cab safe. So, to arm the alarm, simply lock the door, well, shut the door. One press the of the remote, and then the LED will illuminate. Can't see it somewhere. Yeah, it's going. Oh, for God's sake! Yeah, <laughs> the LED's flashing. I can assure you. Well, I'll get in the van and I'll prove it. <coughs> Because people like their LEDs. Um, there we go. So if I lock the van, there we go. It's not too bright in the moment, but at night that will actually light the whole cab up. Um, you can test the ultrasonics basically by when you arm the alarm, the LED will illuminate continuously. If you wave your hand within 30 seconds, you'll get a, a little blink, which just lets you know the ultrasonics are picking up. Um, and then when, oh, it's on now, so once the LED starts flashing, if I move now, it should trigger. So, 100 and, I think it's 118 decibel siren. It's a battery backup siren, so um, battery backup sirens are critical because if someone's attacking your vehicle and your siren isn't battery backup, like it goes straight to the bonnet, they could, Pop the bonnet, again, always make sure your bonnet has got a pin switch on it, we have. Um, yeah, battery backup sirens, somebody asked me the other day why, why is it so important, because this is a coded battery backup siren. This alarm is a category 2 to 1, so it uses the existing Ford system, the Ford, you know, the PATS, transponder immobiliser, to, to make it category 2. Category 1 status comes from battery backup siren, which... It's a wireless one on this Cobra system. Uh, doesn't have to be wireless to be category one, but what it needs to have is a coded arming and disarming signal. So if you were to go in the bonnet and find the find the siren, it's and cut it, the battery backup siren will continue to sound. Um, if you was to, 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 to cut the the neg, it will sound. The pause, it will sound. It's a wireless trigger, so. Um, you know, if, if the power is absent and the alarm is still active, then it will just keep on going. If you were to cut a, a non-battery backup siren, basically the siren wouldn't go off. Siren's only two wires, either a switch pod or a switch neck. If you find the siren, uh, yank it. If it's been fitted badly, yanking the pods and grounding the pods could actually blow the alarm supply lines, um, depending on what alarm you've got. If your alarm is... Um, 
powered off the same fuse. Um, pulling the finding the siren can sometimes be enough to blow the whole alarm. You're supposed to obviously um, separately source and feed the siren live uh, and separately fuse it. Uh, so obviously that wouldn't affect the siren, the alarm in general. But a lot of people will just tag the alarm siren supply onto the permanent supply of the alarm. If you find that supply, if you short that positive, in theory, you're going to blow the alarm fuse. Um, a lot of non thatchum approved alarms will just become then useless. Um, they use standard relay configurations which will just rest at 30 and 87A and the vehicle will start, the siren will be dead. So be careful when you're going for a non thatchum alarm. Make sure it's got a battery backup siren. Make sure the supplies for the siren are sourced differently. Um, because in theory, yeah, if someone's attacking your car, they can just literally break in, pop the bonnet, find the siren, twist it, yank it, or just put a pair of side cutters straight through the, um, the siren wire. That will shut it up and potentially, I say potentially, wipe out the alarm system if it is not fused separately. So a couple of things to ask your installer. Um, it seems in the absence of Thatcham's you know, strictness lately, there's a lot of alarms on the market that they do a lot of stuff, um, but they need to be battery backup siren with a coded signal. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Sorry to rattle on. Uh, here's the instructions for the Cobra. It's a nice basic alarm, but it's it protects the vehicle very well. It's robust. It's reliable. Uh, it's been around for 20 odd years. I've been fitting these since I was 17, so a while. Thanks for watching. The alarm is installed by Vehicle Fit in the Midlands, which is A7900, 60, 50, 40. I don't cover more than the Midlands simply because I don't see you can offer a service going nationwide myself. You know, I'll travel 50, 60 miles, but if I can't get to you within half an hour, then you're going to suffer. With service, um, so Midlands only, Warwickshire, West Midlands, Worcestershire. Yeah, give me a call. Thanks for watching. Cheers.